Yeah. God bless you, Church of New Destiny. Good morning. As we begin to listen to what God wants to say to us this morning, praise the Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. I thank the Lord for you because I see growth. My calling would not be giving me joy if I don't see growth. I have made a pact with Almighty God that whoever, Lord, you bring my way, they must grow. They must be impactful. They must not be stagnant. It's my covenant with you that you will teach me how to water the seed, the flower, the plant, so that they remain evergreen. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. So I greet you in the name of the Father this morning, of, a, of his Son, Jesus Christ, and of the Holy Spirit. I have Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. The Lord spoke to me yesterday and he gave me the title Overcoming Jealousy. And he says he's doing a series on emotional healing, inner healing and deliverance. So it's a series of topics that he's given me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I want you to understand the reason why we are on the operating table of our Lord Jesus Christ. Yesterday we prayed for surgeons in the hospitals because they are invincible. They do the operation and that is it. The patient, patient goes to the ward for recovery and then they discharge home. But the surgeon doesn't necessarily get all the thanks. Jesus Christ, our surgeon, has put the body of Christ on the table for deliverance. Because the body of Christ, I want to say, needs deliverance in this hour. The Lord says we're not fully ready for his coming. Because some of us in our spirits, there are things that are causing delay And none of us will miss eternity in the name of Jesus. There are things that are causing blockages, lack of progress in the body of Christ. I'm talking about the body. And when the body is not well, we go to the GP. We go to the GP for diagnosis. Dr. Jesus has diagnosed the body of Christ. Last week we talked about Judas. Judas, out of greed, he betrayed Jesus. Today we're talking about overcoming jealousy. And the diagnosis from Dr. Jesus is that the body of Christ has greed, has jealousy, has all sorts of diseases, uncleanliness, and we need to be cleansed. We need to be purified. For me, these messages are not easy, but I bring them to you in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not here to single anyone out. I'm included in this message. For as long as we're in the flesh, 
we will need to change our ways. We will need to check ourselves as we go to the doctor for checkup. And they check us physically from top to toe. We need spiritual checkups to check our inner hearts, to check our character, to check our ways. And so that when the Lord spoke to me yesterday about jealousy, I didn't think that it was that deep. So what is jealousy? Jealousy is an internal emotion that we project onto other people. We're emotional beings. Jealousy is one of the diseases of the spirit. But I want you to understand where it's coming from. Jealousy comes from people who have been wounded. Perhaps as a child, they've been neglected, ignored. And they see other children being looked after, being loved. And that jealousy kicks in from that wound, wound of rejection. Jealousy comes from wounded souls who don't know who they really are, although they think they know who they are. And I want you to know this morning that jealousy is not an attitude. So I'm not going to say this person has an attitude of jealousy. Jealousy is a spirit. The Bible identifies jealousy as a spirit. So let's identify this person is different from you and I. Jealousy is a spirit. And what is a spirit? What is a spirit? A spirit is the non-physical part of you, of me. And that is where the seat of our emotions are, our character, our soul. So jealousy has its own identity. It's a spirit. It's got its own character. You've got your own identity and your own character. But jealousy is looking at you. Praise the Lord. In the story of Cain and Abel, I remember God warning that sin is lurking right around the corner. Where there's jealousy, there's all sorts of evil things. Let's go to Numbers chapter 5. I want to identify this in the Bible. That jealousy is a spirit. Numbers 5, 11 to 15. The Bible says, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the children of Israel, and say to them, If any man's wife goes astray, and behaves unfaithfully toward him, and the man lies with her carnally, and it is hidden from the eyes of her husband, and it is concealed that she has defi defiled herself, and there was no witness against her, nor was she caught. Verse 14. If the spirit of jealousy comes upon him, you see, the Bible is talking about a spirit of jealousy coming upon that man whose wife has committed some infidelity. And he becomes jealous of his wife who has defiled herself. Or if the spirit of jealousy, again, jealousy is a spirit, comes upon him and he becomes jealous of his wife, Although she has not defiled herself, then the man shall bring his wife to the priest. I'm just going to leave it there. I just want us to see it in the Bible that jealousy is a spirit. All of us have emotions. And our emotions are invaluable to God. But our emotions must not be attached to something else. And, and the devil... Demons must not be attached to our emotions. 
So as much as our emotions are invaluable to our walk with God, those same emotions, when they become carnal, if we're not spiritually minded and we're carnally minded, our emotions can turn the best person into a demon, into a devil, into a contentious, conniving person full of jealousy and envy. And so because of that, I'm encouraging you, my brothers and my sisters, we have a warfare, a battle in our hands to fight off jealousy. Fight it off in your family. Fight it off amongst your friends. Fight it off at work. Fight it off. Because it is not you, it is a spirit that wants to attach itself to you. I am not a jealous person, but the spirit of jealousy is outside. If I allow it to come in, it will attach itself to me. Jealousy can mean looking at somebody's success as a threat to your success. Perhaps your, your brother was the uh, not the most brainy in the family and everybody looked down on him. Perhaps your sister is like that uh, Joseph with a, a coat of many colors that had wonderful dreams from God. Perhaps the world is looking at your brother as the most famous in your family, like King David, although all the brothers were handsome and qualified, but God anointed him for kingship. And so we can look at somebody's success as a threat to our success. That is what happens in the place of work. Because you're so brilliant, you're so conscientious, you're so unique, you come up with great ideas. Jealousy arises in the hearts of people and they try and put you down, they try and strike you down, they try and put things and just lie against you. It's coming out of jealousy. And those who are possessed with this spirit, they're not at peace with themselves. They're not at peace with their fellow men. They're not at peace with God. Because if you are at peace with God, you are content with who you are. You know that you are enough. There should be no insecurity. Whether your sister is more successful, your brother is more successful, your friend is more successful, you should be happy for them. You should not be jealous of them. And so this jealousy can erupt into a verbal assault through gossip, slander, insinuations, painting somebody black, Painting them red. Murdering their character because of jealousy. A person who operates under this spirit will never, will never love you. Unless they submit to God and repent and change. If you're not seeing change, I'm telling you that they don't love you. They can pretend to love you. They can say words that sound good. But if that character has not changed, they don't, they're not showing love. Jealousy is not love. Jealousy is rooted in hatred. A person who is jealous has not fully submitted themselves unto God. They're not fully submitted. You see, we're looking at jealousy under the X-ray of God's anointing this morning. And so let's look at an example. An example of jealousy in the Old Testament of a person who was consumed by this spirit was King Saul. He was chosen as a first king to lead. He was a leader. God chose him. He was upright. He was proper. He was handpicked to lead the people of God. So you could be picked. You could be 
chosen by God to lead people, to be a shepherd over people, like King Saul. But this same man that possessed that proper spirit was the, the Bible wrote about him as saying that an evil spirit came upon him. How did that happen? Remember when we spoke about Judas last Sunday? An evil spirit entered into him. That same spirit came upon Paul. And so that spirit that came upon the king, king sorry, uh, came upon Saul, that spirit that came upon King Saul, we identify that spirit as a spirit of jealousy. And so when we look in 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 9, 1 Samuel chapter 18, verse 9, Saul was okay all along. He was doing well. God chose him. He's enjoying leadership. But then when David came on the scene, he began to resent David. Listen, let me tell you the reason why David had conquered Goliath. When God uses you to do something wonderful, when the Lord promotes you, when the Lord makes your light shine, it attracts the attention of the good and the evil. And so King Saul felt threatened. Like I said before, people can feel threatened by your success. And so in verse, let me just read from verse 6, he had conquered, he had defeated Goliath, and people were praising David. Verse 6, now it happened as they were coming home. When David was returning from the slaughter of the Philistine, that is Goliath, that the women had come out of all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing, to meet King Saul with tambourines, with joy, and with musical instruments. They were happy, they were rejoicing for their king that we found somebody who helped us, who delivered us here. Verse seven, and so the women sang as they danced and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his 10 thousands. This is what kicked off Saul's jealousy. And then the Bible says in verse eight, then Saul was very angry. The Bible didn't say Saul was angry. He was very angry, jealousy, will kindle your anger. He was very angry and the saying displeased him. How many times are we displeased when they're praising other people? And you might just say, oh, you know, I'm tired of hearing that Pastor Lade, Pastor Lade. I'm tired of hearing that name. I'm tired of hearing that person's name. It's not out of that you're happy for the person. It could be that you're just jealous because that statement would not have come out if there was something not kicking it. So Saul was very angry and the saying displeased him. And he said, they have ascribed to David 10 thousands. And to me, they have ascribed only thousands. Can you see this man like a little child? I thought five-year-olds do that. Mom, you, you, you gave my brother uh, five items and you've only given me three. And mom would say, oh, well, because, and dad would say, well, because he's older than you. Now, what more can he have but the kingdom? You see, he's feeling threatened already. What more can he have? If David can be praised for what he's done, if people are singing and praising him, he might just come and take my kingdom from me. Fear has come in there. Jealousy has come in there and he's feeling threatened. And the Bible says in verse nine, I want you to just highlight that. So Saul eyed David from that day forward. He eyed David. He began to monitor David. Jealous spirits are monitoring spirits. They monitor your success. They monitor your progress. They watch everything that you're doing. They want to know. So they want to keep one step ahead of you. They want to, to, they, they, they want to scheme against you. The spirit of jealousy is a very evil spirit. We must not entertain it in the body of Christ.
And so this same King Saul that possessed a proper spirit has allowed an evil spirit to enter into him. And so Saul appointed David as a leader over his armies. He became jealous, angry, as we have read, because of David's success. And guess what has happened now? He wants to kill him. What happens with jealousy is that you will want to murder that person's character. It happens a lot in the workplace. I don't know about families. Families do it as well. They will murder your character. No matter how good you're doing, you're not good enough. They want everybody to see you as bad. They will lie against you. It's a jealous spirit. He became a murderous oppressor. Previously, God described him as young and tender. But under the spirit of jealousy, he became an oppressor. This is what the spirit of jealousy does. The same things that people fell in love with you, that drew them to you. When you change, it robs you of many beautiful, precious friendships, things that you could be enjoying. Jealousy is a robber of good things. Another person that I want to use as an example is Lucifer in Isaiah 14 verses 12 to 15. Jealousy led to the fall of Lucifer, who we call the devil today. Don't think the devil don't exist. That's part of his deception. If you're listening to me out there, some people say, oh, well, the devil doesn't exist. Yes, the devil does exist. He's a schemer, a liar. The Bible calls him the father of all lies. He's evil. He's jealous of you. He's jealous of your position in Christ. He's jealous of the love of God over you. He wants to take your place. He wants you to worship him instead of worshiping God. He wants you to love him instead of loving God. He wants you to give him your soul instead of giving your soul to Jesus. The Bible says in Isaiah 14, from verse 12 to 15, how you are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. So we know that Lucifer was in a good place before with God. He fell from heaven. Heaven is a wonderful, peaceful, lovely place. He had a great position of honor. God can call a leader to be a shepherd, which is a position of honor. But you can fall from grace. You can fall from being that shepherd if we're not careful. And the Bible says, how you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. For you have said in your heart, verse 13, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. Look, the spirit of I, jealousy, I, it's all about me. I did this and I did that and I have this and I am that and I am this and I am that. This is what Satan had. This is what Lucifer began to do. He wanted to exalt his own throne. So he had a throne in heaven that God gave him, but he wasn't satisfied with where he was. That's why I'm saying that you must know that you are enough in yourself. God has positioned you where he wants you to be. Be content with that. And rejoice with those people who are rejoicing. Don't be jealous of anybody. In the body of Christ, we must not tolerate jealousy, envy, and all these evil things that defile the body of Christ. He said it in his heart. He didn't say it with his mouth. A lot of people say things with their hearts that you don't hear with their mouths. And he said, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt. You see, when jealousy looks at you, wants to take your position, wants to take your place, wants to go above you. I will also sit on the mount of the congregation on the farther sides of the north. He's seen where God is sitting. 
You know, sometimes when people see you, they see your niceness. They see that you're kind, you're good. You go to a, a great length to make them comfortable. You do anything. You make sure that they're not suffering. You even go, even when they offend you, you still forgive. You're still kind. What happens is that if they're not careful, that spirit of jealousy will kindle and they want to be better than you. They want to be higher than you. They want to sit on top of you now. They want to oppress you. They want to rob you of the, of the goodness of God in your life instead of rejoicing with you and praying for you and blessing you verse 14 of Isaiah 14 it says I will ascend above the heights of the clouds I will be like the most high this is Lucifer he wants to be like God now that's what happens that person is so jealous of you they want to be like you oh you know they want your shoes they want your perfume. They want your earrings. They want that jacket you're wearing. They just have to copy you. You just have to look like some King Kardashian or something instead of being yourself. You just want to look like somebody else and you lose the person that God has called you to be. A pastor can be jealous of congregation. A, a musician can be jealous of another singer in the same team. We're blessed with many talents. But the Bible says, if you're not content, you see, you, this is what is happening here. If you're not content, the Bible says contentment with godliness. Godliness with contentment is great gain. When you are godly, you will be content and you will know that you're enough in Christ Jesus. You don't need to be like anybody. I don't even want my children to be like me. I want them to be who Christ wants them to be. I don't want to be like my manager at work. I want to be the best that God has called me to be. And so verse 15, the Bible says, yet... With all of these intentions, that's what the Bible is saying. With all of your intentions and all of your jealousy and all of your self-exaltation, when somebody is talking about themselves too much, you know, we have to watch them. When they're saying, I did it, I did that, I did that, I did that, I made them this, I'm the one that got them, I'm the one that, I'm this, I'm that. The Bible says, yet you shall be brought down to Sheol. God is bringing him down now. Because pride comes before a fall. He was so proud and arrogant. God had promoted him. He was in such a good place. What more do you want? And the Bible says, Yet you shall be brought down to Sheol, to the lowest depths of the pit. So Satan is in, he, 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 he's been thrown down to the pits of hell, but to the lowest part of it. He will never be resurrected. He will never be saved. Because he committed a grievous sin. Nobody will share God's glory with him. Nobody. So I speak to leaders. When you are ministering, give the glory to God. Don't steal. Don't take from God's glory. I will repeat it again and again. Don't allow people to worship you. The Bible says you shall worship the Lord thy God with all thy heart and all thy mind, and everything that you have within you. Only him alone deserves the worship and the praise. And so <laughs> Satan knows just how dangerous jealousy can be. And so because he has that knowledge, he's got that knowledge in him. That's why he's in unleashed a demonic spirit of jealousy on our world. That's why there's jealousy at work, jealousy in families, jealousy. He has unleashed that spirit. He's the one that knows it firsthand. He has unleashed it upon the world. That's why you see jealousy everywhere you go. You're driving a new car. Somebody is jealous of you. They don't even know your story. They don't know whether you used to even not have money to get on the bus once upon a time. Perhaps you were even riding a bicycle. Once upon a time, perhaps you didn't even have five pounds. Perhaps each time you got in your car, it broke down and you had to push it from pillar to post. Nobody knew that. But when God begins to bless you, people begin to judge you. 
and they become jealous of you. Body of Christ, please let's get rid of the spirit of jealousy. It is not healthy for our body to grow. It is not conducive for our growth. There's no reason why this church should be jealous of that church. There's no reason why this shepherd, this pastor, this preacher should be jealous of another preacher. There is no reason why we have one father. One shouldn't be saying I'm of Paul and you are of Apollos. Or if you are not in my church, then you are not part of us. Who said that? That's not God. Or this church has 5,000 congregation or you only have five. Don't put them down. God is everywhere. He's everywhere. He said, where two or three? The Bible didn't say where a thousand are gathered together. There I am in the midst of them. He said, where two or three are gathered together. There I am in the midst of them. And the Lord your God in the midst of you is a mighty God. So God does mighty things in the midst of a few people. The disciples, they gather together. The 12 of them, or the 11 or whatever, whoever was left. And they gathered together. And the Spirit of the Lord came down and they began to speak in other tongues. God blesses the few. Many are called, but only a few are chosen. Don't disregard the few at all. Even the Bible says, don't despise the days of humble beginnings. Before you became a thousand congregation, you were just five. You were just three. You were just two. It starts from somewhere. But let us not be like Lucifer. Who wants to be like God and begin to boast? Let me read from Proverbs 27, 4. Just write it down, please. The Bible says, wrath is cruel. Anger is overwhelming. But who can stand before jealousy? Proverbs 27, 4. From the, I'm reading from the ESV. English Standard Version. Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? This jealousy is a very evil spirit. Don't allow it to attach itself to you. Let's go to James chapter 3, verses 14 to 15. But if you have bitter jealousy, I'm still reading from ESV. But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. Galatians chapter 5, 19 to 21. Galatians 5, 19 to 21. Now the works of the flesh are evident. If you want to know if somebody is in the flesh, it's pretty obvious. They're evident. Sexual immorality, that's the work of the flesh. Impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife. Somebody goes somewhere all the time fighting them in the flesh. Jealousy. That's the one we're focusing on today. Jealousy. Fits of anger. Somebody is angry just like that. They get angry. They're in the flesh. That means the word is not strong enough in them. They're not soaked enough in the word. So everything gets to them. Fits of anger. Anything can trigger off that anger. It's almost like you're tiptoeing around them. That's the flesh. Rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy. The cousin of jealousy is envy. The relatives, drunkenness. When you're constantly drunk, you are in the flesh. Because a drunk man has no control over his own spirit. A drunk man has no control, has no self-control. But the Bible encourages us to exercise self-control in everything. Orgies. Those are works of the flesh. We hear today people doing something called wife swapping. Evil. And things like these. 
These are works of the flesh. They're evident. When you see people in that, they're in the flesh. No matter how much spirit they say they've got, you can do all that you can and say, oh, well, you know, I'm born again. Bless you. But you're in the flesh and you need to grow. And you need to soak in the word so that we can be delivered from all of these works of the flesh. I warn you, the Bible says, as I warned you before, you see, this is a warning now, that those who do such things, they will not inherit the kingdom of God. My sister and my brother, it's not me talking. The Bible says, those who do these things will not inherit the kingdom of God. There is an inheritance that God has given us. If we are exercising these things, we're walking in disobedience. We're not humble enough. We need to be broken. We need to be delivered. We need to be set free. There is a yoking right there. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 3. 1 Corinthians 3, 3. For you are still of the flesh. For while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? If there's jealousy and strife, it's the flesh. You're still of the flesh. This is what the Bible is saying. So this evil spirit of jealousy must be called out. We have to call it out in the open. Body of Christ, what God is doing in 2023 is just saying it as it is. We don't want to hear this kind of messages. We like lollipop messages. We like things that will sweeten us and help us not to inherit the kingdom of God. But the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ is so imminent. We need to be ready. And part of that preparation is getting rid of unclean spirits, is getting rid of the works of the flesh, is being delivered and walking in holiness and righteousness and truth. So we must call the spirit out before it wreaks havoc in all our lives, in our communities, in our churches. We must call the spirit out God is going to give pastors new messages. It's not about gold and diamond anymore. We know what we've got. We've got gold, we've got diamond in Christ Jesus. But we need to be delivered of some things that are hindering the progress of the body. Hindering unity in the body. Destroying relationships. This spirit is vicious. We have to identify it and bring it out in the open so that the body of Christ can be delivered. It can and will destroy every relationship in our world. Because that is what the spirit of jealousy does. It destroys souls. It destroys relationships. So this spirit, what doesn't it like? It's, you see, the spirit of jealousy has its own character. Like I said, jealousy is not you. It's a spirit. But if you allow it, it can attach itself to you and operate through you and project itself through you into other people's lives. So what doesn't it like? Jealousy does not want to see someone successful at something. Jealousy doesn't like somebody else succeeding. Doesn't want them successful at something. Number two, jealousy does not want you to have anything. They like it when you don't have money. You don't have this. You don't have that. So they can lord it over you and look down on you and feel better in themselves because they're lost. They don't know who they are. They're believers, but they're lost in themselves. They have no identity. They don't know who they are. They're not enough in themselves. No, number three, they don't want to, they don't want to see you accomplish anything. They don't want you to accomplish anything. Do you know that a lecturer can be very jealous of even a student that is so brilliant that they can mark them down? That's why we pray for success in exams. They can mark them down because your success can become a threat. Are you a gifted singer? You can become a threat to your fellow singers. Are you in the office and you're excellent? You can become a threat to your fellow managers, your colleagues. A person who operates in a jealous spirit, they want to undercut you. They want to displace you. They want to get rid of you. 
They want to sabotage you. They want to just destroy your soul. They want you out of the way. This spirit is ruthless. It's a spirit of Jezebel. They will mock you. They will discredit you. They will laugh at you. If you're going through something, they won't be, they want to be laughing. They're feeling good now. Oh yes, she's going through that. Because you've been jealous of that person all along. That's why you're happy. Why should we be feeling good when somebody is going through? Jesus said that my rod and my staff will comfort you, yea, though you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Jesus is coming down into that valley and says, I will walk you through. And instead of you walking them through in, in the love of God, you are jealous of them. You are happy because they're in that place. You know, God is going to judge you because of that. Because that is not for a Christian to do. Oh, look at him now. Look at her now. Don't do that. You're a child of God. Don't do that out of jealousy. Let's not be like that in the body of Christ. If my sister is going through the valley, or my brother, or my friend, I must be in that valley with them. I'm always happy when I meet people in the valley journey. I don't want to meet them on the mountain top. What's that? That's no big deal. When you're a millionaire, then I meet you. What's the big deal? It's when you have nothing that means a lot to me. When you're going through and you don't know how the next food is going to be on the table. You're, you're looking for a job. You're looking for breakthrough. I want to be there in that valley with you. Because that is where Jesus would be with you. And then we will, we will rejoice in your testimony together. Praise the Lord. And so as believers... We must not be envious of one another's gifts, number one. We must not be envious of one another's anointing. This anointing on me is not mine. It's God's. I didn't earn it. Don't think it's because I'm fasting or I'm praying or I pray 24 hours or I read the word. No, it's from God. It's by grace. This anointing is God's. And so we must not covet each other's anointing. Let's say that you broke through now. I must not covet your breakthrough. Because I don't know how long you've been waiting, standing, going through. I should rejoice with you. Spiritual jealousy must stop in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. It must stop. It's too rampant. It's destroying. It's stopping the flow of God's anointing. And, and where else the, can this spirit of jealousy manifest? It manifests in our families, in our jobs, like I said before, in our marriages, in our co-workers, our ministry, colleagues. It manifests everywhere. But because we are believers in Christ, we should be different. Jealousy can become an obsession. And it's satanic. Don't rejoice because somebody is going through. Pray for them. Stand with them. Call them. My brother, let me pray for you. My sister, let me pray with you. My sister, I want to encourage you today. It is well with your soul. Don't give up. Even if it's only just that one word. They would rather be encouraged than to be put down. Let's not rejoice in one, one other person's adversity. Who are we jealous of? That's the next question. We could be jealous of somebody else's happy home. You see, their home is happy. They're doing well. They've got this. They've got that. You know, and you look at them and their mansion is big. Do you know how many houses I go to that their mansion is big? Mine is small. I have a good house. A small house for my small family. I've got a kitchen. I've got bedrooms. I've got a living room. I've got a garden that is enough for me. So I don't go to people's houses and just look. I rejoice. I'm happy for them. In fact, when I get in there, it's like, whoa, <laughs> I'm so happy to be here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I rejoice with you. I'm happy for you. 
Because I'm not looking at this temporary place. I'm looking at heaven, my mansion. When you die, you ain't going to be buried with that house. It's just going to be left. It's not going nowhere. So let's rejoice for somebody else. I see people with fantastic cars. Honestly, they're fantastic. But I'm content with mine. I'm okay. And if I go in that car, there's a car when I get into it, right? And I enjoy that car when they're driving it, honestly. I sit in the passenger seat in front. And honestly, when they turn a corner, the, 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 the seat grips you. The seat just folds into you like, don't worry, we've got a hold of you. And I love it. I sit down and I think, ooh, this is nice. <laughs> but I'm not thinking, oh, you know, uh, I want to have that car. I can't even afford that car, my friend. Let's be real. And even if I have the money, I still don't want that car. But I enjoy it. Because I have cars that I like. My identity is me. Their identity is them. You be you. Don't go and buy somebody else's car. You want to show off, you're going to fall. Because that is coming from jealousy. See? Don't be competitive. It's not necessary. Let's, let's leave these things alone. It's worldly, fleshly. We can't be calling ourselves believers and be operating in the world. Operating in the flesh. We must not allow that to happen. Praise the Lord. Jealousy. Who are we jealous of? We can be jealous over a position or a promotion. Somebody got promoted and we're jealous. Uh, they might just call you. Guess what? I've been promoted at work. I'm now the uh, this and that and that of this company. And then you get jealous. It shouldn't be. We should rejoice for that person. And when we rejoice with those who rejoice, our promotion will also come. Maybe they've been ordained as a pastor or something. Rejoice with them. Pray for them. We could be jealous over somebody's possessions. I know people who carry, one bag is 5,000 pounds. One bag that they carry. And I'm walking with them with my bag of 50 pounds or 30 pounds or whatever. And I, I can't be bothered. But I'm happy for them. They've earned it. Do you understand what I'm saying? Don't be jealous. Just be happy for them. Don't even knock them down because you don't know where they're coming. I know people who have suffered and suffered and now they're in their Goshen. Let them enjoy what God has blessed them with and be happy for them because you don't know where they're coming from. Once upon a time, they didn't have that, but they worked out, God blessed them and here they are. Praise the Lord. We could be jealous about somebody else's blessings. Maybe God is blessing them tremendously. Let's rejoice for those who are rejoicing. We could be jealous over somebody who's, somebody is always, people are, have a favorable opinion of them. That's where my story comes in. You know, when Pastor Lade did this, and I spoke to Pastor Lade, and Pastor Lade said that and that. And sometimes I'm like, oh Lord, please, Jesus, just help me. May the spirit of jealousy not kindle in somebody else. Because people are, are, are speaking well of you. And it's good to speak well of one another to the glory of Almighty God. They're not saying it because of that person. They're using it to give glory to God. And you that you are being praised or being favored, please give glory to God. The, that list can continue. So jealousy is dangerous. It can lead to conflicts. And when somebody is jealous, they've stepped out of their spiritual relationship with God. They step out of that cover. You step out of that cover in the body of Christ, with the body of Christ. And what happens is that they get into carnality. So they get into carnal conflicts. They're always arguing. They're always fighting. They're always conniving. They're always scheming. They've walked out of the spirit and they're in the flesh. They're out of the body now. They're operating in another spirit, the spirit of jealousy. It's an unclean spirit. It's seeking to kill, to destroy, to steal. And we cannot use our gifts fully. Look, a jealous person is gifted. Don't, I mean, they, they, God gifts all of us. He loves all of us. They're blessed. But they will not operate in the fullness of that gifting if they're under the spirit of jealousy. It will keep them from operating fully in the gift of God that he has given to us. For the, for the common good of everybody. Our gifts are not for us, they're for other people, but we will not operate effectively in that gifting if we're operating under the spirit of jealousy. 
So let's not undermine anybody out of jealousy. Let's not murder people's character. All right? Like I said before, when somebody has no confidence in themselves to celebrate the success and achievement of others, that's the root of jealousy. All right? So, and I've given you the examples of jealousy. Leaders can be jealous. They're fighting for position at church. Church, body of Christ, usher, pastor, deacon. Jesus loves you, but please don't be jealous of others. Don't be contentious. Don't fight for position. Let God promote you himself. All right? Don't prove that your ministry is better than another person. You know, don't don't fight, please. Oh, because this person is doing that meeting, I'm going to do that meeting. No, you don't have to. You don't have to. Just be you in Christ Jesus. Be content. And, and what's happening there is that when you have an ego, you want to prove that your ministry is important. But to be honest, your ministry is not as important as your ego, you see. Some people promote their ego thinking they're promoting the ministry. It's the ego. It's the ego. Let that ego die. Let that ego just go and just be yourself. The second one is in the music department where I came out from. Honestly, when I walked into the music department, I'd volunteered myself. We were singing in the choir. I told the Lord, I need to leave this place now. Right? The Lord says, I've called you there. I said, no, I don't want to stay here. I don't like it. I don't like what they're doing. They're jealous of each other. This is why I'm on the road. I should, they want I should be the lead singer. I should be this, that. I should be that. They're competing. And what the enemy does, you see, it's a trick of the enemy. Let me tell you. So body of Christ, team leader in the body, lead singer, coordinators, please listen to me, okay? There's constant conflicts in church ministries. Usherettes, ushers, hospitality, all of those volunteering areas of ministry. There's a lot of jealousy, a lot of conflicts going on amongst the gifts of God there. Do you know why? Because Satan has assigned a demon to stifle the, the flow of the anointing that the music is meant to produce. He has, he has assigned demons to stifle that flow. So whilst you're feeling angry or bitter or hurt, you can't really flow properly the way you should. So he's trying to limit the flow. Because when you're all united, behold how, how great, how wonderful, how blessed it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. For there the Lord pours out his blessings, the anointing. His power, his healing, his deliverance, where the anointing is, that is what happens. So the enemy will come and try and stifle that flow by causing jealousy, contentions, rivalries, divisions, strife, all of these things, all right? So people become competitive. Jealousy becomes competitive. They compete with you. They want to do exactly what you're doing. They want to just show the world that they're better than you. They disrupt all the goals, all the assignments. If you've got a ministry, be very careful who you let in there because they can disrupt the goal, the assignment. They can slow you down. And you may not be able to see it very quickly. They can divide your group. At work, jealousy is the type that I say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. You're now a manager. Why are you jealous of the people? So you now come and fix and break things that have been working for years. You don't need to. Just to try and prove that you are better than somebody. No, it's not necessary. It's not necessary. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Jealousy is in it to fix it, to break it, to break it. So when we operate in this spirit, we are bought what God wants to do through us. We are bought the fullness of it. Jealousy always wants full control. Full control. They want to control you. They want to tell you what to do. They want to control you. It's a spirit of jealousy and it must be broken. We have to destroy it. So because we now identify that we are not jealousy, but we could have a spirit of jealousy attached to us, we need to fight it off and break it. We must reject it. We must break it. All right. So let me quickly give you, I want to quickly go forward quickly now. So Song of Solomon chapter eight, verse six, Song of Solomon eight, six. 
It says, set me as a seal upon your heart, as a seal upon your arm, for love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. Jealousy, King Solomon compares jealousy to the grave. The, the New King James Version says jealousy is fierce as the grave. King James says jealousy is cruel. So what does the grave do? It robs you of the same things that jealousy will rob you of. That's what the grave, it denies you. It rips away companionship. You will lose friends out of jealousy. It will rob you of those that you love and trust. It will steal your contentment. It will rob you of, of tenderness towards those so, the people that you say you love. You've got to be tender towards people. You can't be jealous of them. You can't be. It can rob you of everything that the grave will take from you. Jealousy is similar to the grave. That's what King Solomon is saying right there. Jealousy will, will drive those away that you need the most. People that will need the most, jealousy will drive them away because of that spirit that we allow to operate through us. We must reject jealousy, get rid of it. Realize it as a demonic warfare. Realize it. That if you, if, you, if you are walking in it, just recognize it. That this thing is changing my nature. I don't like it. It's isolating me from those people that I need. I don't like this. It's tormenting. It's hindering my effectiveness. I don't want this spirit of jealousy. When I see people and I go green, I must take authority. You spirit of jealousy, I rebuke you. I reject you. I cast you out right now. I am not you. Get me hands in Jesus' name. We have to battle to overcome the spirit. So let me give you the steps to overcome that spirit of jealousy. Quickly, step one. Separate yourself from the environment that is triggering triggering that jealousy. If you're amongst a lot of friends that are fleshly, worldly, separate yourself from that environment that is causing that jealousy, from that environment that is it's a trigger, that is bringing that response that you don't need because atmosphere matters, all right? So just wanting to not be jealous is not going to cause the jealousy to stop. Okay, so I don't want to be jealous. That's not going to stop the jealousy, all right? So just because you're saying, oh, I don't want to be jealous, it's not going to cause that jealousy to stop. You have to take intentional, make intentional, take steps to recognize that this atmosphere, mm -mm, no good for me. If I have a jealous friend, I will graciously, gently just move away from them. Honestly. But they'll constantly just be trying to control you, watch you, monitor you, you know, gossip about you, slander about you. You have to graciously move away from that. If you can't go through Facebook, Instagram, you're looking at it and you're jealous of this person. Look at their dress. Look at this. And you're feeling, because Facebook is full of trolls, evil, evil. Instagram, people will knock you, cut you, abuse you, whatever. There's other people too that are doing good. They are not saying that. But if it's stirring up a jealous spirit in you, delete that account. Delete it, delete it, delete it, delete it. Delete. Delete jealousy from your life until you can handle things and be enough in yourself, then you can go back there. Step two, be thankful for God's blessings on somebody else's life. That's how you overcome. If they rejoice, you rejoice with them, be happy for them. Be thankful for God's blessings over somebody else's life. If God is using somebody else, blessing somebody else, it doesn't mean that God has chosen them over you. God did not choose me over you. We're equal in his eyes. He hasn't chosen me over you. It's just my time, your time to be blessed, my time to be blessed. Some people are earning mega salaries and some of us, the salary is just a simple, small salary, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. Rejoice for those who are doing well. You too will do well. Your blessing is already there. Praise the Lord. So when God has not chosen anyone over you, it's just simply the time to be blessed. So let me quickly give an example. If you see somebody looking nice, instead of saying, oh, you know what? That shirt looks nice on you. Those shoes look nice on you. It's, ah, you know, that dress doesn't make you look as fat as the other one did. Excuse me. Hello, friend. That's 
not a good comment. Oh, that dress makes you look as fat as the other one does. It doesn't make you look as fat as the other one does. It doesn't make you look as fat. You know? So, so you're looking slimmer in this one. Mm, that's not good. Because that first statement was a compliment. The other one is a thin, thin veil of jealousy there. Thin veil of jealousy there. So the Bible says in Romans 12, 15, rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Mourn with those who mourn. Rejoice with those who rejoice. And when you learn to rejoice with others that are being blessed, you will position yourself for God's blessings in your life as well. That's why I like rejoicing with those that are blessed because I know my blessing is coming. Praise the Lord. You know, when you get a new house, I know me too. God will bless me too. Hallelujah. In my own time, in that season, God too, my leaf will, will remain green. I'm rejoicing for you. Uh, has somebody blessed you with some great food? And think, oh Lord, thank you, Jesus. Mine too is coming because my father blessed you. He's our father in heaven. Hallowed be his name. Praise the Lord. I rejoice with you. And then number three, get your flesh under submission. Submit your flesh to the Lord. Jealousy thrives in the flesh that is weak. When your flesh is weak, you will be jealous. Jealousy thrives in that. So get your flesh under submission, okay? So crucify the flesh. Like now we're fasting, we're crucifying the flesh. Praise the Lord. Submit yourself to God, all right? And then admit that jealousy is in your heart. Admit it. Don't, don't, don't deny it. The problem with deliverance is that when you deny, you will never be delivered. Honestly, if a drunkard is saying, I, I don't drink, I haven't got a drink problem, they will not be delivered. So we have to admit that jealousy is in our heart, then deliverance will come. We must confess that sin and say, Lord, I'm sorry for being jealous, you know, I'm sorry, Lord Jesus. Forsake it. Forgive anyone who you think is jealous of you, just forgive them, all right? And then renounce that spirit of jealousy and say, I renounce the spirit of jealousy in the name of Jesus. I renounce the spirit of jealousy in the name of Jesus. Amen. And then fill that space with the word of God. Fill it with the word, the word, the word, the word, the word. Fill it with the word of God. Amen. And be be, be enough in yourself. Be content. All right. And so we're going to pray right now quickly. Let's pray. And please, you just pray after me. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Say, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, and on the basis of the authority of his power, his word, his blood, and the Holy Spirit, I bind the activity of unclean spirits and command the spirit of jealousy and envy to come out of my heart and mind. Come out of my heart and mind. You spirit of jealousy and envy, come out of my heart and of my mind in the name of Jesus. You no longer have a place in my life. I reject you now in Jesus' name. I'm covered by the blood of Jesus. And I seal this prayer by faith. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And if you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to pray after me. He's the only one that can help us not to be jealous, not to be envious. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you today. I've heard your word and it's convicted my heart. I want to stop getting jealous and envious of people around me. I want you to be the Lord of my life. I give my heart to you today. Forgive me of my ways. Forgive me of jealousy, envy, unforgiveness. From today, help me to change and be a different person. I ask you, Jesus, give me your Holy Spirit to transform my life. From today, be the Lord and my personal savior of my heart, of my life. I give my life to you today. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, and amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And it's as simple as that. Welcome to the household of God. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. And thank you for your patience. It's a long sermon, but uh, God bless you. Amen. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. <laughs>